Hi everyone, welcome to tip one of our top 12 interactive tips for getting the most out of links. This one is all about creating background layer templates. So I've been using uh, text boxes and um, my line pen, which I find here, there it is there. And I've been creating some um, addition calculations on screen. I've also added some text boxes at the top because I've decided to differentiate for different groups. These are just colored rectangles that I've dragged onto the screen as well. So I've got all of this content and it's all in what we call the normal layer, meaning that I can click on things and I can uh, interact with them. So if I click on this here and I'm not in the pen mode, I can move this around. And I don't really want that to be the case because when children come and use this on the screen, I don't want them fiddling with um, the original equation. I want them to use the pens to add their own notes and solve the, the sums. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these items by dragging my finger across all of the items there and avoiding moving them. And you can see that I've selected all of them in one go. And the nice thing in links is that it doesn't matter how many items you select, you only get one floating toolbar pop up. So now if I come here to the arrange and transform icon, I'm going to send all of these things to the background layer. I can tell I'm in the background layer because it says over here, exit background. So if I tap on that now, I come out of the background layer and now with the cursor selected, I can't select any of these things. So the, you know, the rectangles that I was accidentally moving before, I can't now mess with those. So we're ready to go. The children would be able to start annotating on here. So for example, we could grab a pen. We can make sure that it's at a thickness that's going to show up and a nice color and we could start doing some of uh, the equations directly on the screen and if I want someone else to come and have a go I can just use the eraser then to rub out what they've done but everything in the background layer is protected okay so what about if I want to use this background layer as a template because usually we're not just going to give uh, the children just one equation to solve in a lesson. So let's say I want to replicate this on a few of the slides. Well, that's easy to do. If we come here, we activate the slide viewer so we can see all of the slides in any presentation. So I'm on slide one. And if I come here to this little hamburger menu, I can go into the background options. Now, everything that I've put into the background layer, including the text boxes, will all be replicated when I press here on use on all new pages and that's it. So now if I decide that I want to insert a new page after the page I'm on, you'll see that this new page, there's my page one and here's now page two, they're exactly identical and all of the equations are in the background again. But of course I want to change the sums this time. There's no point doing the same equation again. So all I have to do is go into the background layer and edit those text boxes. To do that, it's an additional tool and we go into edit background and we can tell we're in the background again because it says edit background. But now I'll be able to click on the text boxes and make the changes over on my laptop or with the keyboard that pops up if you're using links in the app on the board. Change these, ready for a new uh, set of equations or new children coming up to the board to, to try to solve them. And then of course when you finish changing them, exit the background and you're able to let the children have a go at solving the equations. Works really well if we start presenting because then we've only got the tools down here and the children can pick a pen of course and they can start having a go at solving all of the equations. Have to make sure I don't get the answers incorrect with the eraser there in case there are any errors. And that's tip one.